In this video, we will study the operating pressures of the R290 refrigerant gas in a small commercial freezer, the equipment parts, its operation, and recharging procedure. On the screen, we observe the cooling circuit of the freezer, which operates with R290 refrigerant gas. The R290 refrigerant enters the evaporator in a liquid state, at a pressure of 21 pounds per square inch. The equivalent pressure value of the evaporator, in bar units, is 1.44 bar. With this pressure, the R290 in the evaporator achieves a temperature of minus 20 degrees Celsius. With this low temperature and the help of the fan, the heat from the products inside the equipment quickly transfers to the R290 refrigerant, causing it to evaporate. As the R290 refrigerant absorbs heat from the stored products, they cool down, allowing for preservation. The heat from the food transfers to the R290 refrigerant in the evaporator, causing the refrigerant to progressively change from a liquid to a gaseous state. The R290, now in a gaseous state with a slight temperature increase called superheating, is suctioned by the compressor. For this case, let's assume that the temperature of the R290 refrigerant in a gaseous state at the evaporator outlet is minus 15 degrees Celsius. This means that the R290 refrigerant goes from minus 20 degrees Celsius to minus 15 degrees Celsius, thus, in this equipment, the superheating is 5 degrees Celsius. Although the temperature has a slight change, the same does not happen with the pressure. We can approximate and say that the R290 pressure at the evaporator outlet is practically the same, it still amounts to 21 pounds per square inch. The R290, now in a vapor state, moves to the compressor through the suction pipe, which we can identify as the thickest pipe of the compressor. The pressure and temperature of the R290 refrigerant increase considerably in the compressor. The pressure of the R290 at the compressor outlet reaches a value close to 210 pounds per square inch. The temperature of the R290 at the compressor outlet can be around 60 degrees Celsius. In the condenser, the refrigerant must lose the absorbed heat from the products inside the equipment and the energy absorbed in the compressor. This heat must be expelled into the environment in the condenser. This heat dissipation process is favored by the high pressure that the R290 refrigerant gained in the compressor. As the R290 refrigerant loses heat in the condenser, it changes from a gaseous to a liquid state. The pressure of the R290 refrigerant in the condenser remains at 210 pounds per square inch, but the R290 significantly decreases its temperature. This temperature decrease of the R290 in the condenser allows the refrigerant to transition from a vapor to a liquid state. The R290, now in a liquid state and at a temperature close to ambient, exits the condenser and goes to the capillary tube to restart the cycle. In the capillary tube, the pressure and temperature of the refrigerant decrease significantly, returning to the initial pressure of 21 pounds per square inch and minus 20 degrees Celsius. The R290, now in a liquid state with low pressure and temperature, returns to the evaporator to start the refrigeration cycle again. On the screen, we are displaying other pressure values commonly used with R290. The main drawback of R290 is its classification as a flammable refrigerant. 
However, since the refrigeration equipment where it is used does not have such high refrigeration capacities, and R290 has notable cooling capacity, small commercial equipment requires very little R290 refrigerant, reducing the risk significantly. To carry out the R290 recharging procedure, consider the following recommendations. 1. The main risk when performing corrective maintenance on R290 equipment occurs when welding. In this regard, it is recommended not to perform this procedure without having previously completed a complete evacuation of the equipment with a vacuum pump, carrying out this process for several minutes, with the expulsion of R290 gas to the outside. And paying special attention to possible accumulations of R290 in the capillary tube. 2. The R290 gas, being composed of a single gas, can be recharged or introduced into the equipment in both liquid and gaseous phases, which is indifferent. 3. R290 is compatible with any type of oil, however, it is advisable to follow the compressor manufacturer's recommendations. 4. Since the required grams for an R290 refrigeration system are small, it is highly recommended to recharge by weight, using a scale. 5. If you do not know the quantity of grams to be supplied to the equipment, then you should perform the recharge by referencing the pressure. Recharge until reaching the required pressure value at a certain temperature in the evaporator. 6. Check with an ammeter clamp the final current consumption of the equipment, the measured value should always be below the regular consumption.